So next is the science of magic. Today we're going to learn about energy okay, and what science has to do with magic. Everything is energy. That's right. Everything in the universe, everything is made of the same stuff. It's just that each thing is present in different forms and shapes. Take water, for example. Whether it's in its liquid form, coming out of the faucet in the sink, flowing in a river, or coming from the sky in raindrops, whether it's frozen in ice cubes, or steam rising from a teacup, it's still water, right? Of course it is. If you haven't already learned this in school, you will one day. There was a very famous scientist by the name of Albert Einstein who discovered something called the theory of relativity. That theory is E equals MC squared. So you're probably scratching your head wondering what in the world does that mean? Or you may even wonder why would we, be, we would be talking about science on a show for pagan kids. Well, I'll tell you the answer to the second question first. As pagans, we care very much about nature. Paganism is a nature-based faith. That means we honor nature in all that we do. It's that simple and that complicated. Many pagans care very much about science because so much of, what, of science has to do with nature and what's all around us. By understanding nature, we can better care for our planet, ourselves, and each other. The next thing you need, to, you need to know is, what is matter? Well, there's nothing the matter with me. What's the matter with you? <laughs> you know I had to say that, right? <laughs> okay. Matter is anything that's made up of atoms and molecules. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. In other words, it's the stuff all around you, including you. So, matter is stuff. And that stuff absolutely everything is made from different kinds of atoms. That's what makes everything so different. That's why water is different than concrete, why plastic is different than wood, why flesh is different than metal, and why air is different than chickens. <laughs> now you know where the song, that part of the song comes from, right? Okay, so there are 90 different kinds of atoms made by nature, and scientists in laboratories have made about 25 more. They're all so, so tiny that you cannot see them without a microscope. And most of us really don't think about them at all, unless you're learning about them in school, or you're a certain kind of scientist. And these teeny, tiny atoms each have three main parts of them, called particles. There are a few smart, smaller parts to each of the atom, but we're going to talk about the three main parts. Protons and neutrons join together to make the center of the atom called a nucleus. The third part is called an electron, and these circle around the nucleus, or the center. Protons and neutrons weigh just about the same, although the neutron is just a little bit heavier. Electrons are much, much smaller. In fact, if an electron weighed the same as a dime, then a proton would weigh the same as a gallon of milk. So that's a very big difference. Again, the reason that air is different than chickens, say it with me, Okay, it's because each kind of atom has a different number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in them. Okay, so matter is stuff. Okay, we've got that. Now on to energy. Now that means that we have to learn a little bit more about atoms and their three parts. Scientists will tell you there are only two basic things in the universe, matter and energy. In our world, the world that we can see and feel and touch, Matter and energy are always separate. But in the world of atoms, where things are happening that we can't see, feel, touch, and touch, things are very, very different. I already told you that electrons circle, circle around the nucleus of the atom. Well, electrons move in complicated patterns called orbits. You may already know that our planet orbits around the sun throughout the year, and that our moon moves in an orbit around the Earth every day. Electrons move in orbits too, only they don't always go in a circle. They move in waves like a form of energy. Electrons are considered to be both energy and matter, both of them. Energy is the ability to do work. Energy is everywhere, 
Planes can fly because they're powered by gasoline. That's a type of stored energy. We can watch TV and play CDs because of the, of the, because of the energy that the electricity produces. We can run, play, and sing because our bodies convert the food we eat into energy. There are two different kinds of energy, potential energy and kinetic energy. A baseball in my hand has potential energy. Once I throw it, the baseball energy turns into kinetic. It's in motion. Okay? Energy is always changing back and forth from potential to kinetic to potential to kinetic. This change is called transformation of energy. That makes sense, doesn't it? Potential kinetic. <laughs> it transforms all the time. So back to the first question. What does E equals MC squared stand for? Well, I could tell you the complicated version that E equals energy, M equals matter, C is the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles per second multiplied by itself, which is even faster, okay? <laughs> we can't see it. Well, actually, that's the point. It's the, it's the speed of light. We can see it. But what, what, what that really means, what E equals, what e <laughs> equals mc squared means is that energy and matter are two different forms of the very same thing. And that matter can be turned into energy and energy can be turned into matter. You should know that energy can never be destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. That means when we, when we use energy, it doesn't just disappear. We change it from one form of energy to another. Because we're talking about energy, there's one more little thing you need to know about atoms and their parts. The electrons that move, move around the nucleus or the center of each atom have different frequencies. That means they vibrate. Uh, okay? Everything in the world has their own very specific energy signal or frequency at which it vibrates. People, plants, animals, stars, rocks, everything. At the very basic level, everything in the universe is made up of the same stuff, some kind of energy. The faster something vibrates, the higher the frequency will be. That includes our thoughts and our feelings too. The more negative our thoughts are, the lower the frequency. The more positive our thoughts are, the higher the frequency will be. No matter what the frequency is, we attract things into our lives by what we feel and what we think. We become what we think about. That does not, however, mean that if all you think about is being a chicken, you will become a chicken. That isn't what it means. What we become what we think about. Why? Through the use of my imagination, I can create images, pictures in my mind of the things I want of the way I want my life to be. When I think of something, I control the vibration I'm in and I control what I attract into my life. That's why our choices are so very important. For example, if I spill a glass of milk all over the floor, I can choose to feel mad or scared or annoyed, but I know that what I choose to feel, I know that that makes a difference in my vibration and what I'm going to attract to myself. So I made up a saying <laughs> that helps me a lot when I make mistakes. In fact, I made it up after I spilled black paint all over the kitchen floor. I mean, it was a lot of black paint all over the kitchen floor. It was awful, and I thought, well, it could have been worse. And then I said, it could have been but wasn't. Hip, hip, hooray. It could have been but wasn't. I'm happy to say, everything's going my way. <laughs> okay, so maybe it's not a long song, but it made me feel better. So even though I had to clean up that awful mess, I wasn't mad while I was doing it. I was laughing. I was giggling because it was silly to make up a song like that. It could have been but wasn't. Hip hip hooray. It could have been but wasn't. I'm happy to say everything's going my way. Yay! <laughs> I get to decide what I see in each situation and most of the time I choose to th see things in a way that helps me to feel good. No one can cause you to think things you don't want to think. We have the freedom to think anything we want. 
to choose the images we're going to hold in our minds. We choose our thoughts. We can use our thoughts to build great ideas or terrible ideas. The ideas we're going to we're going we, we build are going to determine the vibration we're in and what we attract to ourselves. The vibration is going to decide the energy and the things we attract to us. So yes, yes, your choices do make an, an your choices do make a difference. So let's sing that energy song one more time and maybe it will make a little more sense to you now that you know why we were talking about chicken and air. Okay, here we go. E equals MC squared. That's why chickens are the same as air. Energy and matter are the same, you see, according to the theory of relativity. It all comes down to atoms which are really, really small. Everything is made of them, they're inside of us all. Po protons and neutrons weigh about the same, but electrons like to play a spinning game. They vibrate high, ah, and they vibrate low. Oh, attracting what we think of, don't you know? Choose ideas that make you laugh and sing. Ah. <laughs> With energy, you can choose anything. Yes, you can. And that's the science of magic for today. Ooh.